Welcome back, Billiken fans. It's Zach Miller and Peter Hale. This is the Midtown Madness podcast, and we are officially on UMass Twitter downward spiral alert. Uh, Pete, we have a lot to talk about. It's been a minute since we've been on the mic. Yes, it has, Zach. But uh, but I want to start by wishing you a happy birthday. Uh, as people Thank might you. or might not know, Zach's birthday was this weekend on the 17th. So happy birthday. And uh, how was it? Uh, <laughs> I find myself in the most just strangest situations, I think, uh, of all time. Uh, just a lot of just really weird stuff happens to me or I really don't know. Um, but, uh, yeah. So we started out, um, at Midwestern, uh, went around a little bit to a couple different bars downtown. We were supposed to go to the Cardinal game, uh, ended up in an 80 person pink Whitney shot ski at wheelhouse. <laughs> I, uh, if I didn't already see a visual of what that was, I would just be bewildered right now. Uh, but yeah. uh, I think I, I think I saw something on your Instagram stories. Yes. Yeah, so it's just a long, flat thing with shot glasses on it every, you know, three or three feet or so, or maybe even a foot. Boy, um, how, how how is it eighty people? Was it one? It long? was. Yeah, they 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 nailed them together, or like fastened them together. Uh, there was like wow. six of them. I don't know. It was wild. Um, I, I nearly killed a uh, baby slash toddler exiting the bathroom of patios, uh, coming out of the bathroom. The most could not be more perfect timing. Uh, the it, it went, the door went whoosh, right past the child's face. <laughs> and I whoosh, just the biggest exhale. Oh, and oh my God, uh, you've ever heard um, the um, uh, at uh, Start Bar uh, was with my friend and we were chatting to a couple of women and uh, this girl comes up. She is the uh, what what the the blocker. We'll keep it PG of the group apparently. <laughs> um, uh, she she comes up, s- starts trying to just torpedo the whole interaction. Then bites my arm. <laughs> oh my god! But just but, just straight up, straight up bites you. Yes, not enough to like break the skin, but she bit me about here. Oh man! Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, you know it would be a blend of two of your stories for me i've been bitten by my own toddlers who sometimes i <laughs> almost kill accidentally but uh I, yeah i can't say that's ever happened to me uh, I, I, I i probably have deserved it but it's been a minute but uh yeah that's a new one somehow that wasn't the most random thing to happen the uh uh so i'm up at mcgurk's with my my sister and uh buddy and uh we stayed out there way later than i thought i was going to and uh, we meet this traveling artist chick that we sit there and chat with for like two hours, um, and uh, end up she ends up offering me a ride home. C- completely, this is again completely innocent. And as we're past that road, no, I'm serious. This was not like that at all. Uh, down, we're riding down forty, and the St. Louis wheel. Uh, is like right there. And I'm like, she's from out of town traveling all the, on her way down to, I don't even know where she's headed to. I think New Orleans. Uh, but I was like, hey, you're in town. I've never been on the wheel. Let's go on the wheel. So we just up and bought, <laughs> just went on the, the road, the the wheel. I, 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 I have, I cannot tell you her name. Honestly, I have no idea. So you were <laughs> She gave me a ride home, dropped me off. All yeah, no big deal. But uh, yeah, I have I have no recollection of her name. You uh, you were just in like full on choose your own <laughs> adventure mode. <laughs> it was it was just the, like it, where, it, wherever it, wherever <laughs> wherever your impulse takes you. Let's let's do it. It was it was a very much say yes evening. Uh, it was a, yeah. it was a, it was like a Mad Lib mixed with a choose your own adventure. Yeah, it yeah. really was uh, quite bizarre. Uh, but yeah, I mean the game got rained out, so 
this none of this happens if it doesn't if if the heavens don't open up yeah right and, and decide to drop a little Alanis more set lyric on me uh minus the wedding and plus the birthday so well i <laughs> i'm glad you had fun i have not had uh, a wild birthday in a long, long time. So Th this was I, almost wholesomely wild. Yeah. I mean, you didn't get into too much trouble. I've definitely had birthdays where I probably deserve to uh, <laughs> go to jail, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, this one sounds like a, like a good time for all and, and, and something that you can actually share on the show. <laughs> yes. Um, but really nobody gives a flying, um, you know, what about my birthday? Uh, they listen to us for the Billiken content, and there's a lot of it to go around, as I mentioned already. Um, but first, we need to settle once and for all which school is the real SLU, S-L-U. Um, Pete, talk about this insane Twitter drama. Like, this is this is the kind of shit that Austin McBroom gets into. <laughs> Yeah, that he fabricates out of uh, thin air. But, like, I don't know how some of this stuff crosses our plate. This apparently wound up, uh, I, I guess it originated uh, as just kind of a dumb comment from the Reddit College Football FCS Twitter handle, which I guess has quite a few followers. So somehow we end up with an alum of uh, Southeastern Louisiana University in our mentions saying that they're the real slew and that they own the initials SLU. So, of course... <laughs> So of course I'm annoyed. I shouldn't be wasting my time with some some idiot troll. But naturally, look it up. Uh, the official website of Southeastern Louisiana University says that it should only be shortened to Southeastern and not S E L U or S L U. Doesn't even mention S E L A, which I've also seen for, as an abbreviation for them. Uh, so I, I guess we're we're probably thinking that that our SLU, you know, the real one, owns the trademark. But I've honestly never seen this discussed anywhere. It's um, in their athletics logo. Yeah, there's a, there's a there's a TM, but is it just for the like the uh, design, or is it for the actual initials? I I don't know. I wonder if South e so Saint Louis University. I think it's still done like this, but SLU, the the trademark for the athletic department uh, marks. And the university marks are not related at all. They have no connection. The athletic department is completely independent from the university. Um, now, again, obviously a trademark doesn't, doesn't have anything to do with that. But I wonder if it has anything to do with the fact that the official guidelines from the university say one thing, but the logos to the athletic department say another. Yeah, that's a good question. And it's, it's one, um, I don't know. And, and I feel like maybe someday if we remember, if we, if we get somebody from like the athletic department who really knows the ins and outs or somebody else from the university who really knows Brian Kunderman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If we can get somebody on to kind of answer that, I, I am definitely curious. And one of the reasons I've been thinking about this is because I had just heard a story where Ohio State was trying to trademark the B, like the T-H-E, just the word in front of Ohio State University, um, at which I just, I mean, it's obviously the most overt, annoying. They've been doing that since before I was in high school, I think. Yeah, but they, and, and it, it was one of those things that I, I don't remember when it started. I mean, you're right. It's been a while, but I feel like it hasn't been my whole life. Uh, but it's become a little more annoying. Like it started as like a cute little fun thing they did for themselves, whatever. But now, <laughs> now it's like, it's like aggressively irritating. Um, and then the fact that they're trying to trademark it is, is annoying. Um, but part of this story also included the fact that no school has been more litigious with its trademarks than uh, you'll be surprised to learn Duke University. Um, they've, they've apparently tried to trademark or, or, uh, you know, get, own the IP of like anything that could possibly be related to Duke. Um, it, it, any, any form of, of blue devils and in even blue preceding other words, um, they've failed in a lot of these attempts. Well, well but, there but goes they, our change to the blue billikens. Yeah, I mean, if we tried, I bet they would given, given the list of things that, um, that they've tried to, uh, litigate before. Um, 
so I was I was wondering if if SLU should take the same methods as Duke uh, when it comes to SLU and Southeastern Louisiana University just to make it official and, and get them off our case once and for all. Yeah, it, the SLU that's interesting because as we've noted in the past, the the merchandising situation at St. Louis University, of course, it all go, always comes back to close with me. Um, the merchandising okay. situation, yeah, the merchandising situation in the past at SLU has been not good, and they they've not been the type of school that has uh, like merchandise in Walmart. They've been really protective, almost in a way similar to like not not even on the same level, but like Abercrombie, like hmm. how they would like do anything they could to keep it out of thrift stores, keep it out of it. It it, it, it almost seems more accidental. In Slew's case, yeah, where they just wouldn't allow people to create anything with their branding on it, right? They were very strict about, um, you know, the 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 deals, and I'm sure that had something to do with 199 allegedly falling apart. Uh, they were just in different places, I'm sure. So, yeah, it's surprising that Slu hasn't even attempted this, but it also, I mean, Slu does kind of seem laissez-faire. When it comes to uh, you know um, being proactive in protecting themselves, yeah. It, although I I wouldn't be surprised if they've just done it a really long time ago and not made a big fuss about it. Because like, who's honestly thinking about Southeastern Louisiana University, especially as it relates to to us? But I really don't know. And again, I I, I would love to have somebody who actually knows on to to, to talk about that. Yeah, I'm trying to think of a good analogy. Like it's almost like one of those things where if you, if you point out somebody doing something wrong, you come off terrible. Like, mm. oh, like, like, like they think the negative publicity with uh, enforcing it would make them seem uh, yes like Duke, uh, yes. the school that everyone hates. Yes, and I mean we do, we are. You know, the school is moving. Uh, I mean, I mean, it's just kind of a school that that prides itself on being, again, men and women for others. So, I mean, you have that kind of motto that might, um, you know. Uh, cause because for like well we don't want to really you know come off as you know high strong business you know but, you know a, a more of a college less of a business so. right um yeah we're just too nice yes 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 actually we're not why pete <laughs> because we're stealing coaches now that's right. Yeah, good. Uh, some some good men's basketball news today. Uh, we're going to announce it before the official uh, SLU athletics department that uh, that Will Bailey is going to re return as the um, assistant coach for the men's basketball team to replace retired uh, Ray Giacoletti. And uh, it was a little bit of Twitter sleuthing that uh, that got us to this conclusion, huh, Zach? Yes, I, w I want to be completely clear when I tell our listeners that Brian Kunderman following uh, Gray Giovannine was not the re on Twitter was not the reason I saw this photo. So I want to put that out there. It was not Brian Kunderman's fault, Chris May. <laughs> that's and that's that's honest too. That's it. the it really was that not. is the that is that is the. Uh, that is the uh, one hundred and twenty three percent truth, if I may. <laughs> if I am a high school basketball player, um, you know, uh, announcing my commitment. Right. You know. So. Um, yeah. No, that wasn't it at all. Um, I, I was tipped off, thankfully, to the photo and uh, with with a little hint, and uh, I came around to uh, to that. And I, I mean. There's really like, uh, there's no way that like this should have even like found its way to us. No, it, it's it's pretty crazy that it did. Um, but seeing, I mean, it was undeniably him in the background mm -hmm. of this photo uh, behind Coach Ford, and it seemed pretty clear that it was a new photo too, and it wasn't something because someone did at we we on a text chain that we were on. Someone did raise the question of, well, do we think this is an old photo? Can we be sure? And uh, and and just based on like the the gear they had on and mm -hmm. everything, I was pretty positive this was new. Plus the um, the other photos that this guy um, Gray 
Chief Anine has had shared. Um, I, I, I was pretty positive that it was new. Um, he, he seems to go around, you know, visiting a lot of different coaches. He has a company called World Stride Sports. I'm not 100% sure of what it's all about, but uh, but that's that's kind of how we saw this. And, uh, and UMass fans, when it was brought to their attention, did not seem super happy about it. No, they didn't like it so much. Um, <laughs> uh, I believe there to, you know, uh, you know, earmuffs alert. Uh, but I believe it was a lot of, uh, you know, the fuck coach Travis Ford show is back on the road. Uh, find me the, the video of Travis Ford falling again. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, UMass Twitter is in shambles, Pete. Yeah, and it, it doesn't take a lot to get other A-10 schools um, riled up about Travis Ford or SLU or anything having to do with us. They they really don't uh, need much of an excuse to, to come at, you know, to come at us. So um, but I'm honestly fine with it, though. I mean, for a little background for those who either kind of uh, don't remember um, or need just a little bit of a refresher. Um, Will Bailey left the coaching staff a few years ago. He was on Ford staff uh, to go be an assistant at South Carolina under Frank Martin. Uh, Martin was let go by South Carolina, and it looked like Bailey was following uh, Martin up to UMass, where he took the job a few months ago. Uh, but now, now today, another major hint that this is happening um, when you click, you can search Will Bailey basketball and, and uh, or Will Bailey UMass or whatever. And when you click on the link for his bio, you get a 404 page missing error message. Um, so there, the, you know, there was something there and now there's not. Um, and a little more background on Bailey before he joined um, SLU staff in 2016. Um, he was at LaSalle for six years, uh, you know, full circle in the A-10 here. Um, also served in as, a, as an assistant at East Tennessee State, Maine, Chicago State, and UAB. He's originally from Chicago, um, and uh, you know before before South Carolina and SLU, he he'd been on several different NCAA tournament teams. Um, he was involved with that uh, uh, LaSalle team, uh, which will be going on ten, its ten year anniversary of making the Sweet Sixteen. Um, so so that's kind of who Coach Bailey is. He's got good Northeast ties good Chicago ties. Um, he's, he's a really good assistant, uh, all around and, and, and works with the guards, um, you know, in, in practice as kind of his positional coaching assignment. Um, great guy, great coach. And I'm, I'm thrilled to have him back. Yeah, I am too. Uh, we, you remember when, um, I'm, I'm, I'm spacing on the strength coach. They brought in the strength coach in, uh, Rob Hornet. Sorry. Sorry, Rob, if you listen to this, I apologize. Um, They bring in Rob Hornet, and clearly part of the deal was a the title, right? The assistant athletic director for strength and conditioning. Right. What do we think the motivation was here for Will Bailey to, you know, leave UMass for this job? Was it coming back to work for Travis, a mentor he had previously worked with? Do you think it was um, a, a bigger financial commit or a bigger financial? um incentive or maybe it was a title you know that's a that's a good question and i I guess we haven't seen an official title yet i mean we know it's an assistant coach a recruiting assistant you get three of those on every staff but we also know Corey tate is the associate head coach um that we also know that on the women's team there are two associate head coaches now uh so i guess that's that's something that is possible i can't imagine the financial picture would be a lot different uh, between SLU and UMass. I mean, UMass hiring Martin is definitely a big move. I don't know what uh, what the budget is for assistance at SLU. Um, don't know their salaries or anything, but um, I, I just, I can't imagine that would be a, a huge difference. Um, it, it might just be a, a quality of life thing. Maybe he likes St. Louis, you know, maybe uh, he was up in Springfield for a few weeks or a couple months or whatever, and just wasn't, wasn't feeling it up there, you know, maybe he, uh, I don't know, maybe he heard Coach Ford's pitch and it just was the right thing at the right time. I, th- I think that's that's a good question. And uh, there could be a lot of speculation over to what the different uh, 
uh, you know, inputs might be there. I, I, what's his family situation? Is he married kids? Uh, I don't know, but I do wonder if there was just not enough room for two bald guys on that staff. <laughs> now you sound like, uh, like men in blazers talking about, uh, the balds, but, uh, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's also possible. Anything's possible, I suppose. Yep. Just ask another bald guy, Kevin Garnett. <laughs> All right, I'm done. Uh, we got some schedule news on the uh, on the agenda here, Pete. Why don't you uh, run us down uh, what we got, and then we'll get into it. It's been a little while since we last recorded, so this is this is not breaking or anything. But um, SIU Edwardsville will come to Chaffetz on December 21st. So we now have dates for Murray State, the Mohegan Sun event with Miami, Maryland, and Providence, Auburn, Iona, Drake, and now SIUE. Still waiting on official dates for Memphis, Boise State, Evansville, and obviously the A-10 games. Um, So I think that probably leaves us just two exhibition opponents and a regular season game left to announce. uh, If I had to guess at what's left, um, you know, technically unknown on the schedule. Um, so it's really, really taking shape and I'm seeing a lot of other schools re- release their full non-conference schedules. So it should just be a matter of time now before we see something from slip. Every time I see exhibition opponent, I just imagine we're talking like athletes in action and uh high marks going to trot out to, to, you know, give his testimonial. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I, and like he said, I mean, those are some good teams too. They were, uh, they're probably probably better than the lower division teams that we'll will likely um, face, but uh, but yeah, I I definitely remember those exhibition days well. Shameless plug for our Scott Highmark interview. If you haven't listened to it, one of the funnier uh, moments was him detailing uh, playing against Cincinnati uh, and beating Cincinnati on a buzzer beater on his buzzer beater, and then having to talk to the fans after the game. Uh, just go check, go, go watch that high mark interview. Uh, P- Peter and I have had discussions and there, there's a certain interview that I love and that's, you know, filthy foul mouth or no, wait, no forthcoming foul mouth and funny. Um, and, and high mark was so incredibly funny in his own way. Yeah. Uh, just his, like, he was not foul mouth. He was, he was forthcoming and he was funny and it it was still just perfect. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I think I I mean I, as much as I agree with you, I think the most important thing and what makes it so good, like you said, is if somebody's just themselves. Yes. You know, and that's who he is. Yes, a hundred percent. And that's again why I think our Kevin Lish episode was pretty cool too. Because right. Uh, but uh, anyway, I'll stop shamelessly plugging myself. And Pete, um, <laughs> congrats. To Martin Linson are in order, Pete. Uh, again, we're we're lagging a little behind here. Yeah, also not exactly breaking news. This was announced last week. He signed with uh, Uni, Uni Baskets Paderborn, a pro team in Germany, which is about two hours from his hometown of uh, Dusseldorf, Germany. Um, so he'll be he'll be starting out his pro career um, in his native country as planned. So uh, yeah, congrats to Martin. That's uh, exciting stuff to see more. Uh, Billikins and the pros. Uh, these European teams' names are just absolutely hilarious. Yeah. I don't, I don't, and I don't, I don't ever want to find out what they really mean. <laughs> really, never. I'm never. It's the one time I'm not rushing to Wikipedia. It's you know, it's it's one of those things where like a lot of times, depending on the the country and the league and the level and everything, sometimes it's a, a company name. Uh, sometimes it's like a city or province or state name that's kind of incorporated in there uh, with like a foreign word that you have to look up to understand. It can be a lot of different things. I know Potterborn is the town, uh, but that's, that's I'm assuming the middle word has to do with basketball. Uh, I don't know why it's uni or uni uh, baskets Potterborn. And uh, yeah, let's let's not look it up and just let people guess. Yeah, uh, my guess would be uh, my guess was that it's like an ex, uh, um, like a extension of learning or extension of college. That's why you uni. I don't know. That's what I always think of when I see those. But um, 
Anyway, no, let's uh, let's bring it back stateside, though. Uh, Jordan Goodwin has been playing outstanding in Vegas during the NBA Summer League. Yeah, he really has. Um, he he had he got off to a good start because in that in that Detroit game, he played just over twenty minutes and wound up with twenty points and five rebounds. Didn't play as much in the Suns uh, game and played a little more in the Pelicans game. He had eleven minutes. Uh, scored five and two in that one. Um, and then he started in uh, against the Pacers and put up, uh, you know, 19, six and two with three steals in 27 minutes. Um, he's really playing, really playing some good summer ball. And, it, and it, it, he's kind of at that level where like nothing is guaranteed, but he's really, again, making a compelling case for himself. I, I, I just think he's that dude, like who, who comes off the bench and can kind of do some, uh, he plays defense. He's a spark plug. He can he can really get going, and he's kind of found his shot too as he's gone to the pros. Um, so he's doing everything he needs to do, and I would love to see him get another shot in the league. Yeah, obviously, uh, obviously it's a, it's a bit of an off comparison, but I always think of like a David Perron, uh, a guy who came in. Yeah, he went straight to the NHL, right? Or he, you know, he 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 was an NHL guy from the jump. Jordan Goodwin is not that guy, but look at. Perron's career trajectory. I mean, it took him a while to get to where he is, and now he's an incredible puck protecting forward in the corner, uh, strong as hell, and and, and an absolute uh, crucial piece to any winning team. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and I, I guess I should add here they did play um, the Warriors the other night. Uh, Goodwin started, and in 20 minutes, he was a little off. He went one for seven from the field, but. You know, five rebounds, four assists, two steals. You know, you know good when he always finds a way to kind of fill up a stat sheet. Yeah, I mean, that's just – that's a good win game, man. That's – it's like a Conklin summer. <laughs> um, let's see, new offers. I mean, we get – there's a lot of them out there. It's It's been a cascade of offers out – I mean, all the way out to uh, 2025. Yeah, and and why don't we start with the young with the young guy first? Um, uh, Trey Williams out of Ashan is a twenty twenty five, which means he'll be a sophomore. Um, he's a guard. He plays his AAU ball with Southwest Illinois Jets. Um, the, you know the highlights you can find of him so far, and he's a little younger, so there's not a ton out there. Really make him look more like a shooting guard at this point. Um, he's got a really nice looking, lethal three point shot. Um, as a freshman, you know, he wasn't necessarily the primary ball handler at Vashon, which is obviously a loaded team that seems to win state more often than not. Um, so he's going to take on a bigger role moving forward and we'll track him closely to kind of see how he develops. But he's he looks like a really nice player. And um, I'm glad Slew's gotten on him uh, early. And it seems like they're really getting involved with some of these guys at Vashon again. Um, by the way, speaking of the 2025 class, Keep an eye on this class in general. It is loaded with good guards in St. Louis and the, the whole state of Missouri. Um, there's Zyre Collins, who's Yuri's younger brother at St. Mary's. He's great. Um, Luke Walsh at Vianney is another sharpshooter. Keep an eye on him. Aaron Rowe um, from Tolton High School in Columbia is nationally ranked. Um, and SLU has offered him. They've offered Zyre Collins as well. Um, Arian Webb out of North Kansas City. Uh, really nice guard. And then we've offered another guy. Um, he's in Texas now. He's originally from St. Louis. His name is Jordan Lowry. So uh, so that class is just huge. Yeah, I, I'm I, I'm really excited to see what happens with Zyrie Collins. I mean, yeah. uh, if, if he ends up, you know, uh, three quarters the player that, that Yuri Collins is, he's going to be a, a really good college uh, uh, point guard. Yeah, I would say at this point um, in his career, which is very early, um, he's more of a natural scorer than than Yuri, um, and he's not. Whereas Yuri's more of that natural passer, um, so it is going to be really interesting to see um, how his his skills develop over time. All right, let's get to the high school old heads, Pete. The twenty twenty three offers. Yeah, we've got our rising seniors, and there's there's six new offers out to this class, and it's it's clear that we're especially looking at guards. Um, speaking of Yuri Collins, the the succession plan is on. Uh, maybe we need our own 
uh, succession theme as we're talking about guard recruiting at SLU. Uh, Tyshawn Archie, uh, point guard out of Peyto, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess, high school in Houston. He plays his uh, AAU ball for Pro Skills, which is a Nike EYBL uh, program. Really well-rounded guard, quick, smart, crafty, scores from all over the place. Um, he didn't have any offers in mid-June, and now um, by mid, you know, mid-July, he's got nine. So he's really blown up quickly. Um, Cameron Carr is a really interesting one because here's a kid who does not even announce his offers. Uh, we kind of found out uh, because uh, Mocan, his AAU program, another Nike UYBL team, um, tweeted out some some footage on him and uh, it listed SLU as one of his offers. I think it's pretty recent based on his Twitter follows and uh, you know what what has been said of his other offers, but it's rare to find a kid who doesn't publicize his own offers. He goes to Link Academy, which is a national traveling basketball program um, centered out of Branson. Uh, same coach as the Mocan Elite um, AAU team, and uh, you know he's a long, slender wing. Uh, scores a lot, got a nice looking shot, and um, they, they say he's still growing too. Um, he's already like 6'4 or so. He's actually the son of former Carbondale and NBA player Chris Carr, who I know a lot of SLU fans will remember from the early mid 90s. Um, another guard, point guard out of Whitney Young High School in Chicago and Mean Streets AAU uh, is Dalen Davis. It's good to see SLU getting back into Chicago. Uh, wonder if our new assistant coach had something to do with this offer. And, um, you know, because we haven't had an offer there since probably 2019. And I think those were all to uh, the 2021 class, which is already at school now. Um, so he's a point guard who scores distri and distributes in equal measure. He can really shoot it. Got a nice quick release. Um, he, he's really good in mid range. He's got this big step back move to kind of get open and, and hit mid range shots. Uh, really nice looking player. Um, he's got some high level offers too. Jared Hall is a wing out of Tennessee, Lebanon High School. Plays um, AAU for EAB Tennessee, which is an Adidas three stripes um, circuit team. He's a long athletic wing with great size. I mean, he can play kind of a two or a three, but he's so big. He's like six, seven, six, eight, um, and looks every bit of it. He's a good shooter from outside, especially when he's in rhythm. Smooth player, gets to the rim, really unique looking player, um, just because he, he's often lined up as a shooting guard and he's so, so big. Um, then we've got an offer to a kid out of Camden, New Jersey, who plays for New Jersey Scholars, also in the EYBL. Uh, Cian Medley, uh, I'm, I, I might be butchering his first name, sorry if I am. He's just a quick, crafty, fluid point guard, fills up a stat sheet, fun player to watch. He's really rising right now in, in the EYBL. He wasn't a particularly high level recruit before that but now a lot of a10 offers a lot of other you know smaller northeastern schools and he's starting to get some high level attention the last one this kid has really blown up and um he's a center named anthony robinson out of the christ school in north carolina uh team huncho uh is is his aau team another adidas three stripes um circuit player um slu has been tracking him for a while, but kind of held off on, a, on an offer. And uh, he's gone from zero, and I think now he's at almost 20 offers in just over two months. Um, he's just exploded um, in, in attention, and it's easy to see why when you watch a little video on him. Absolutely explosive big man. Um, he, he used to, he was known really as a defender before, a strong defender, but his offensive game has, has grown by leaps and bounds since I kind of last checked in on him. Uh, when SLU first started showing interest back in the spring. And um, I, I, I mean, I love his potential. Uh, he's getting a lot of high level attention now and you hope SLU doesn't kind of get lost in the shuffle, but really nice looking player. And he's another one we'll be uh, watching closely. Man, I, I mean, the, we're, we're just, we're, we're on, we're, we're looking at so many more higher level players and, and more highly regarded recruits, it feels like, than we had previously. I think so. I mean, I, you know, it, it, what's clear is they, we think we've got a really good team this year. Coaches think we've got a really good team, but they know we're going to be losing a lot. Um, when you think about all the guys who are going to be moving on after this season, uh, we, we really have to make some noise. And I think 
there was a recent interview uh, where Phil Forte, who was on a, he was on another podcast and uh, was talking about, um, they, they want to really be recruiting the high school ranks for this 2023 class because they want to grow up talent. You know, they don't just want to mix in a bunch of transfers every single year. You're, you're, you're obviously going to be looking for the right guys in the transfer portal um, to kind of give you those veterans but um, you got to do it with a combination of, of talent that you farm up as well. Uh, you, can't, you can't do it all with transfers. So I think they're really looking to do that in the 2023 class, knowing that this year is the year that they're going to try and make a deeper run. And then um, they're going to build a more solid long-term core after that is what, is what it sounds like to me anyway. Yeah, I think that's important. And I think that, you know, I, I don't think we should lose sight of, of the four-year players. I think that's still that mid, mid-level mid program, mid- to high-level program wheelhouse. Uh, while we, we let the, the big, big boys take, uh, um, you know, uh, take the, the transfers uh, and, and pay the big bucks, I guess, for the, uh, for yeah. the NIL stuff. So. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, that's just kind of the unfortunate uh, way it's going. But I mean, obviously, SLU repelled um, Tennessee, so it's not as though we are uh, we aren't able to compete in that in that sector. It's just it's just a good way to you know you know find I guess again build that base. So it, it's yeah. good to see that. Um, let's move over to to baseball as as much as I uh, enjoy basketball. Uh, no, no Billikens taken in the MLB draft so far, and I don't feel like there will be. I feel like we would have heard um, kind of more uh, smoke, or not heard smoke, but heard more rumblings, seen a little more smoke than, than we have. Uh, but uh, as I'm showing right now, uh, there were only, only uh Two Atlantic Ten pitchers or Atlantic Ten players taken in the uh, so far, Pete. Yeah, um, Houston took uh, Nolan DeVos out of out of uh, Davidson, and then Seattle grabbed Tyler Locklear out of VCU. Um, both both names that we heard quite a bit in the A ten tournament, and uh, you know who slew who slew struggled with. So I don't think they'll miss those guys. Uh, no, not at all. Um, Missouri State, uh, if we move into the the state rather than the conference, uh, Missouri State, Drake Baldwin went to Atlanta. Uh, Mizzou, Spencer Miles went to San Francisco. Simos, Andrew Keck went to Atlanta. Liberty High School's Carson Milbrandt went to Miami. Sorry about that, buddy. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I believe it's Jackson Mizorowski from Crowder College in Missouri uh, went to the Brewers. Um, Joshua Day out of Mizzou went to Arizona. Nathan Landry out of Mizzou, Mizzou uh, went to Boston. Central Missouri's Josh Bortko went to the Phillies. Uh, Mizzou, uh, Gar- Drew Garrett. Actually, I don't think these are Mizzou guys. I think they're just out of Missouri. Uh, of- yeah, I don't think it's the high school either. Like They don't have their high school listed. Uh, Drew Garrett. Uh, went to the Phillies as well. Whereas Missouri Southern State College, which I've never heard of, uh, Tommy Stevenson uh, went to the A's. Uh, more importantly, on the Billiken side, men's soccer uh, announced the full roster. And uh, I'm ready for soccer season, Pete. I know I know, STL City FC uh, is, is uh, you know, coming up next summer. But, man, it's hard for me to get excited about players when, like, I don't that I don't know when the Billikens are getting ready to kick off their season in less than a month. Yeah, I, well, I saw women's soccer tweeted. I don't know if it was today or yesterday that they're exactly one month away from the start of the season. Uh, so men's soccer is obviously right there too. And uh, yeah, it's 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 finally it feels real, you know, like like uh, it feels like a long time since we had that awesome 16 one and four elite eight season, you know, with all these guys drafted in the MLS. It was like uh, that feels like it was so long ago. Um, so it's it's great to have them back. And it seems like Kalish puts together a really, really impressive class. I mean, we've got 14 newcomers this year. 
um, who all begin their eligibility this fall at SLU. Um, he loves the class. He says it's one of our most exciting and talented classes to date. Um, he, he said the staff worked really hard to fill positional needs and that, that, you know, guys who fit the culture and they drew from local, regional, national, international teams, um, got some transfers mixed in as well. Um, so he says this class has a little bit of everything. Um, 14 guys, Zach, I mean, that's, uh, that's a lot. I mean, we knew we had to replace a lot, but then when you see it on paper, it's like, oh, good Lord. Yeah. When you say we had to replace a lot. Uh, the only goalkeeper on the roster was uh, Yuval Sade. Uh, so a lot to replace. I mean, coming back, you've got Kevin Komodi. Uh These are names of note, obviously guys that produced last year quite a bit. Uh, Alex Sterenberg, which I'm excited to see him back. Yeah. Uh, I like him a lot. Uh, and I mentioned Kevin Komodi. Uh Jack Micah is back. Uh, he, he got some run last, uh, last year, Chris Alwang, Brogan Townsend, uh, looks like Johnny Klein as well. Um, uh, Christian Buendia, Seth Anderson is back. He was really good, uh, last year. Caleb Iverson got a little bit of run as well. So there is, there, there is a nice nucleus of returning players, but yeah. I mean, you look at who they kind of added in there. They they went to the transfers a little bit this year. Um, you've got uh, Central Arkansas's Alberto Suarez, who they are the staff is incredibly familiar with because we yeah. play Central Arkansas every year. He's out of Zaragoza, Spain, uh, which would you know anytime you can get a guy from you know Europe tends to be really really you know highly regarded. Um, out of the University of Albany. We've got a goalkeeper, uh, Carlos Tofern. Uh, he's out of Hamburg, Germany. It's interesting to see us go a little bit more, um, uh, you know, international because that's that's really been a blind spot the last couple of years under Kalish, as he really brought in those guys that were that were kind of Gallagher guys that came up with him. Yeah, that's right. Um, it feels like Coach McGinty um, before him had a lot more of an international presence on his rosters. Uh, but you're definitely seeing that here. Now, some of these guys had been in, in the U.S. for a while. Right. Um, I, I e- think either that's as a big transfers, difference. Or, you're right. Or in prep school. Although he does have one, uh, Mads Peterson, mm-hmm. who's um, from who's straight from Denmark, um, coming in as a midfielder defender, um, who wasn't previously at another place. But it seems like most of the other international players had at least one stop over here before they're at SLU now. Yeah, uh, Enzo Akpoye out of Asaba, Nigeria. Uh, he can he has come over from Yale University. Um, as far as low, well, first of all, I talked about the goalkeeping situation. Uh, they've got Mason Hart coming in out of Salt Lake City, Utah, uh, who played in the Sporting Kansas City Academy. I don't figure that one out. Well, uh, he, he went to Park Hill South High right. School, so he may have just recently moved to KC or something like oh, that. Oh, okay. Um, Gavin Roberts out of Florissant, Missouri, Marquette Catholic High School, and Scott Gallagher. And then, as I mentioned, Carlos Tofern uh, out of the University of Albany uh, and Hamburg, Germany. Uh, local flavor, uh, we mentioned a couple of these guys already, but it bears repeating. Uh, Mateo Boasso. Uh, midfield forward out of O'Fallon, Illinois, O'Fallon Township High School. He was a SLSG kid. Um, you've got Thomas Davidal. Oh, my goodness. Oh, pa- Palatine, Illinois. Is that close? I have no idea. I didn't. Do no, that. that's, that's, sh- that's Chicago. Oh, that's area. Chicago. Screw that. Um, <laughs> not him, just Chicago. Um, Carson Gibb out of St. Charles, Missouri. He's a forward. Fort Zumalt South High School, St. Louis City SC Academy. Um, I mentioned, uh, Gavin Roberts, the goalkeeper out of Florissant, uh, and that wraps it up for the local. So uh, not, not a whole lot there locally in, in this class. I mean, and, there's and, a bit, but not, you know. Yeah. And it's, it's also rare. I feel, I feel like usually we have at least one, uh, Metro Catholic conference guy on there. So you're not seeing any, uh, Chaminade, Slu, CBC, uh, you know, none of those guys this year, which is kind of, it feels like rare for SLU. Um, but there is, you know, like you said, there's a guy from Palatine, Illinois, um, CJ Coppola out of Waukee, Iowa. Well, you know, we, we overlooked um, for Minnesota United's uh, club program. 
We overlooked Grady Easton. I didn't uh, – because SMU is, like, tacked on to the end there. Um, But Grady – Oh, got it, yeah. Yeah, Grady Easton, a defender out of the Woodlands, Texas, uh, FC Dallas and Rise SC. Uh, He is a transfer from Southern Methodist University, which always puts together a solid soccer program down there. Yeah, Lane Warrington or Warrington, too, um, who's a defensive mid out of uh, um, SMU. He was was a transfer from there as well. We we had two come in. He's originally from Lawton, Oklahoma. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's on paper. I mean, these are these are great guys. And and we sure know that uh, Kalish can can game plan and scout and uh, put together uh, solid tactics in the match. Yeah. And I mean, given how many, um, you know, we you, even though, like you said, we have a nice returning core, um, given how many departures there were, we're going to see a lot of these guys right away. You know, these aren't all just guys who are going to be stashed. I think the transfers, especially um, the guys with a little more experience, um, we're going to see them on the field in a month here. So this is pretty exciting to see it all on paper and, uh, you know, can't wait to see how they uh, play together. Uh, field hockey released their fall schedule. Um, Pete, it's a 19 game slate that features eight home games at Sportport and seven Atlantic 10 conference games or Atlantic 10 conference matches. Uh, once again, my plea to bring them back to campus has fallen on deaf ears. It's not happening this season. They're still going to play out at Sportport. Uh, they open the season up in East Lansing, Michigan on Friday, August 26. They play Central Michigan and Michigan State. Um, and then they stay on the road to face Boston University and Iowa out in Iowa City. Now, SLU actually played Iowa last year, um, and Iowa was number two in the country at the time and uh, won that game 10 to nothing. So I don't know if they're going to be that good again this year, but that's two Big Ten opponents right out of the gate and one who um, is traditionally kind of a powerhouse. Uh, so they're certainly going to be challenged this year. Yeah, I think uh, I think incremental improvement is is what we ask for out of this program. It's uh, it's an underfunded program. It's an off campus program, and it's a program with a young coach looking to to find her way. And uh, again, still trying to get her on before the season starts. Get her on the show and and chat because I think that uh, it's important that we we know about you know the ins and outs of of running a program that's underfunded whether she'll even cop to that or not it, it remain you know probably not but uh, it's important to understand probably not but she'll she'll bring up a lot of things that we would not have thought of right mm-hmm. i mean because this is you know like you say a program that uh unfortunately is just not front of mind for the athletic department they play off campus they 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 never win you know um in the like over the course of a season you know they were three and 14 last year um which is not by definitely not one of their worst records you know this is a program that has (laughs) they won three struggled mightily um uh, for years. So I think, I think her perspective would be pretty unique and there would be a lot of things that she would, um, have insights to that. We just, you know, that you and I as sort of casual observers would never, um, know to, to think about. I, I just, I, there's something to be said about how much I appreciate, uh, this program, uh, comparatively speaking to a program that I've feel like underperforms uh you know what i mean like this field hockey program it it underperforms but it really doesn't uh it performs to the level at which it's supported whereas you know you 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 know my feelings about volleyball right now have been well documented both in audio video and written form uh (laughs) so that that's kind of you know i i have a lot more love for the field hockey program right now compared to when my love for the volleyball program, you know, 10 years ago. So uh, it's, um, I'm excited to get out there. I'm going to get out to a few games. I swear to it. Uh, We'll just, we'll see how that goes. Um, Yeah. uh, Fall sports season tickets are on sale, Pete. Yeah. For, for both men's and women's soccer and volleyball, um, you know, it's a, it's a great and, relatively inexpensive way to support SLU sports. Uh, not to mention both soccer teams are going to be really good again this year. So uh, go out and, and pick some season tickets up if you can, um, you know, to give the athletic department a little boost. 
Yes, definitely do that. And and of course, these the two soccer teams are absolutely outstanding, and and they're going to be very, like you said, very very good again. And and it's worth supporting because I know uh, I've people I've spoken with have said how much of a uh, a plan Kalish has for this program. This is not this is not Kalish trying to work the ranks up to a, a big time program. This guy is looking for a career making. This is a career making job for him. This is this is his Duke. This is his, uh, you know, I'm trying to come up with, this is, you know, he, he's, he wants to be the Coach K. He wants to be the, the Bob McKillop, you know, the guy who's a lifer at a school now. So uh, I, I think he, you know, and, and, and the way I see it, I think Katie Shields feels a similar way, maybe not to the extreme, but I think Katie Shields is very, very happy here. I think the, that Gonzaga, if you want to make a men's yes, comparison, could be the model um, to be the team. Like not every, you know, some years your conference is going to be one bid. Sometimes it's going to be two or three. Um, but you know that they're going to win the conference. The league goes through them every year. Yes. And uh, they're either going to win it outright or they're going to win at the conference tournament or they're going to win both. They're going to put players in the pros and they're going to be fun to watch. And um, if that's the what these soccer programs are going to be um, in the context of the A-10, then I'm all for it. All right, Billiken fans, uh, that wraps up the week that was in, in Billiken Athletics. Thank you for indulging my uh, my story time early in the episode. Uh, don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Midtown Mad Pod, uh, because if you don't follow us there, you're going to miss out on us uh, putting UMass in a body bag. Uh <laughs> Follow Peter's Peter at Peter is a tweeter. Myself at Zach Miller MMP, and we're on Instagram too, uh, posting pictures uh, here and there whenever. I mean, we're gonna see how that goes in, in the new season. Obviously, hopefully, we'll be using that a lot more. Uh, it, and on Twitter, we're we're at uh, I think eight eight hundred nineteen followers. Can we get to a thousand by tip off? Can we do it? I think we can, uh, but it, it's gonna be close. We need one hundred eighty followers. Uh, by probably what November, Pete? Yeah, early November. Tell your friends. Uh, yes, uh, we also appreciate any and all suggestions you might have for the show. Uh, please go subscribe to the show on all platforms. Uh, if you haven't left a review, don't be afraid to leave us five stars as well as a review. Uh, as always, Pete, go Bills. Go Bills. <laughs>